Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Common Sense Guys channel. And um, today I'm going to be doing a video where I fucking told you so. Today we're going to be doing a video about Shamina Begum again. Where in case that you didn't know, it's actually been proven that she actually was part of ISIS and was actually part of their enforcement team where she would actually give out whippings, lashings, so on and so forth to the point where people were physically fucking scared of her. But yet the British government and others wanted to have her come home, to have this person, this barbarian, literal terms, actually come back to British society after the immense amount of pain that she must have put down onto other people, all because she's a woman. We'll get into that very, very shortly. So, fresh claims about Shamima Begum's life in Syria have emerged, with sources alleging the London teenager was a member of the feared ISIS morality police. Hmm, I thought she said that she wasn't part of ISIS at all, that she didn't do anything a part of the regime, it was just her boyfriends and husbands that she that did. Interesting that, isn't it? So the Bethnal Green schoolgirl tried to recruit younger women to join the jihadist groups, according to reports. So, interesting. She said that she had nothing to do with anything to do with ISIS, but yet she tried to recruit younger girls the same age as her into ISIS. But we wanted her to come into the country. Interesting. So according to the Sunday Telegraph, the 19-year-old played an active role in the organization's region of terror and was allowed to carry a, a Kalashnikov rifle, earning herself a reputation as a strict enforcer of laws such as dress code. Hmm. So, wasn't part of ISIS at all, but was just part of the morality police? So, allegations also emerged today that Miss Begum had been witnessed preparing suicide vests for would-be bombers. Now, I know some people would say, well, these are just claims. It's like, okay, fine. But you have to remember that she herself admitted that she has seen in her own household beheadings and heads, decapitated heads, in their waste bin, in their bin, in their house, around their kids. It is not a stretch to say that she would prepare some form of suicide vests in that sort of situation, would it? It wouldn't be a stretch. But let's, let's carry on. So the man on Sunday said Prime Minister Theresa May and Home Secretary Savid Javid had been briefed that she sewed vests onto bombers so that they could not be removed without them going off. And yet everybody called Savid Javid a racist and an Islamophobe for not allowing Begum to come into the country, even though he's a Muslim himself. Interesting, but you know, racism of some description. So the information was said to have been gleaned by allies spies agencies believed to be the CIA and Dutch military intelligence from other Western ISIS converts. Hmm. So other people were actually coming forward and actually saying she's a liar and she was part of the morality police, as well as probably being part of ISIS themselves. Well, no, probably actually, to be fair with you. She was actually part of the morality police guided by ISIS. So she was there by ISIS, wasn't she? Miss Abigum has previously insisted 
She was never involved in the terror group's brutality and said she spent her time simply as a housewife after fleeing London when she was just 15. Apart from all of these claims now coming out and saying that one, she was trying to recruit other young girls into ISIS and into Syria and into the fight for it. No, she was part of the morality police, basically enforcing the civilians to do what ISIS wanted and to be part of Sharia law. Hence why she has no remorse for any of this. She does not regret what she's done and she knows the atrocities that ISIS has done and does not care. But you know, that's just me saying that. Wait, no, hang on a minute. Here's her saying that. You have obviously been through a lot over the last few years. Could you describe for us what it has been like to live with and under Islamic State? Oh, you know, at first it was nice, it was like how they, you know, showed it in the videos, like, you come, you make a family together, and then afterwards things got harder, you know, when we lost our girl, we had to keep moving and moving and moving, the situation got poor. Was there a point where you started to have second thoughts about your life in Islamic State, under Islamic State? Just only at the end, like, after my son died, I, I realised I had to get out for the sake of my children, the sake of my daughter and my baby. Yeah. It was only at the end, it was only at the end, but she didn't have any regrets up until that point. So Miss Begum is said to have graduated to a level where she was a member of an all-female police squad, a morality police squad. And in this role, it is claimed that Miss Begum carried a Kalashnikov rifle and had a reputation for being strict on other women who she accused of behaving in a non-Islamic way. In her role, Miss Begum is said to have received anything between 500 and 1,500 a month. Is that in bribes? Is that in actual trying to work out who's paying who? Was she being paid by ISIS? All these questions need to be answered. But the point is that she was working for ISIS under the morality police. That's what's most important. And stupid people who see a woman with a child naturally assume that women cannot do this because she's a mother. Well, I have news to tell you, leftists and people that are on that corner. The right will always treat women with more respect and more equality than what you give us credit for because we were going to treat her exactly the same as a man and we didn't see her as a frail woman that couldn't do anything we saw her as an islamic terrorist that could and has done immoral things and is part of islamic state terrorism but you know the left sees a woman with a child how could that ever happen who really is the ones that are not for equality. Who really are for that? To carry it on, the sources also alleged that Miss Abigam was active in recruiting other women to join ISIS from across Europe, including texting a teen from Australia in 2015. She allegedly told one girl, don't believe any of the bad things you hear about Le Dalois, the state, it's fake. You have everything you want here, and we can help you find a good-looking husband. Miss Begum and her British citizenship revoked and has since been stuck in a displacement camp for months after being detained when leaving ISIS territory. Fucking good job. So the teenager arrived heavily pregnant at al camp in February and gave birth shortly after but her newborn son, named Jariah, died from a lung infection last month. It was her third child to have died during her time living in the Caliphate. And I am sorry to hear that. No mother should ever lose a child, regardless. Miss Begum's family are proceeding with a judicial review of Home Secretary Mr Javid's decision to remove her citizenship. I'm sorry, you fought against the state, as in the national state, as in the UK and as in Europe, in, as a whole, for all you people that love Europe, she was fighting against that. 
as a whole. She was part of the groups that were fighting against it, that were fighting against any sort of form of democracy. And she was enforcing herself morality police that was set by Islamic State. And, <laughs> and sewing fucking suicide bombs onto suicide bombers. But you know, she did nothing wrong, right? She, she doesn't deserve this. She's a good girl. She didn't know what she was in for. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. Please do not forget to like this video. And if you would like to, please subscribe to this channel and share the video as much as possible. Thank you very much for all the help that you do provide and you do give. Thank you for that. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I bid you farewell, I bid you adieu, and I'll see you all again real soon. Bye-bye for now.